Right. Welcome to Excel Ignited and SSS Veda day number nine. Time for a conversation about where we're going from here with the rest of this month. Because I've shown you some things that Excel is used for. We've gone through the ribbon, talked about the things you see inside formulas, the difference between a formula and a function. So there's a lot of structural things that we've covered so far. And you've seen some actual work. You've seen nesting an if inside an if. So we can go several directions from here. One way would be to say, okay, there are 400 functions in Excel and they're divided up into 11 categories. And here are some popular ones. But I feel like that's focusing too much on the tool. Now, let me back up and give you some idea about how I'm thinking. When I was in high school, my father bought me a guitar. And those were two miserable months. He was an old jazz musician who believed you learn all of your scales, no playing songs, trying to mimic what's on the radio, syncopating rhythms, no. And not only was that miserable, uh, you know, not fun, I also had no grounding, no orientation to why is this important? All right, so I can play G sharp minor scale. Okay, what does that get me? I don't know, but that was his way. That's the way he learned, and he was passing that on to me, and it lasted all of two months, and I was done. Then, when I get 38 years old, I buy myself a bass, start taking lessons. My first lesson was in a group class of bassists. There was about 10 of us. And the instructor early on started us playing simple pop songs. And it felt good. It inspired us to stick with it. Keep going. And then eventually I took a few theory classes even read a music theory book on my own and started to write things based on the music theory. It was fun. I was curious. And then I could look at a piece of sheet music and get some idea as to what was going on in there. And how does that relate to Excel? I want to get us starting to make some music. Get some sense of accomplishment start doing some things rather than get a whole bunch of functions and features that we still can't do anything with. My real music lesson came when I went to Victor Wooten's bass camp. Now, Victor Wooten is a world-class bassist. Any serious bassist knows who Victor Wooten is. And he holds these bass camps 60 bases from around the world came to his camp for a week in Tennessee. Victor focused on making music. And one main lesson I got was that music is for the listener. And in the Excel world, data is for the person who has to consume it the person who has to make a decision, the person who needs that data. And Excel is just an instrument for delivering that. And that's where the focus needs to be. A lot of times we get caught up in the right way or doing something like somebody else did it. And we have to take an assessment of the tools that we have at the moment and deliver what we can with what we've got. So we might have to do something the long way, the hard way. We might have to responsibly cut some corners in order to deliver for the listener and for the consumer. And that is a distinction between the consumer 
and another professional. When professionals get together and then they start to try to impress each other. But we don't hire each other. The audience, the consumer, they hire us. They're the ones that we need to please. We can learn from other experts and we can collaborate. But when we start trying to show off and please other experts, then we're in trouble. Lesson two from Victor Wooten's base camp was too much focus on notes. There are so many other things that make up music. There's silence, dynamics, so many other things than just knowing here is when I'm supposed to play A flat. And one funny thing that Vic would say was that when we were all learning to talk, we weren't sent off somewhere to go talk with the beginning talkers until we were ready to graduate into talking with intermediate talkers. No, we talked and we seized opportunities to talk with all kinds of people, other little kids, adults, teenagers. Then there were people who taught us bad words that we didn't know were bad words. We used improper grammar. That's how we learned. And we got good at it in a short amount of time. Whereas a lot of times with music or some other things, you know, we're expected to take years and years and years and then be so humble to say, no, I'm, I'm not good at it. I still have so much more to learn, you know, but are you serving your purpose? That's what we want to get at is serving a purpose. And whether we've mastered something or not, that's irrelevant. Those are the three lessons that I got from Victor Wooten's base camp that I'm going to apply in how we move forward. As we go forward, what I'm going to point out are good and bad habits. Because what I've seen over the years in working with students and working with clients is the thing that wrecks spreadsheets, poor layout. And hard coding numbers in formulas. So I'm going to stress good habits. I developed a nine video series on developing a cooking calculator. And it wasn't designed to develop the cooking calculator. It was designed to give a broad introduction to Excel through building something. You get to see linking sales to each other, relative and absolute sale reference, formula triggers, layout. So go ahead, go over there. I'm gonna put a link so that you can get to that video series and start checking some things out. So there you have it with Excel Ignited Day 9. All right, you ready to start doing some stuff? And please let me know if there's anything specific that you would like to do because I'm here for you.